guys, welcome to You'll Probably Agree, and look who I have with me. My good friend and Oscar-nominated director, David McGowan. And David, you opened up a little film program in Rwanda called the Rwanda Wildlife Filmmaking uh, Program, right? That's right. We uh, started a uh, film school, a wildlife filmmaking film school in Muzanzi, Rwanda. It's just at the foothills of the Volcanoes National Park where they have the mountain gorillas. And the whole idea was that we wanted to give tr filmmaking skills to rangers, trackers, and guides. Mm. Not necessarily to make filmmakers out of them, but to give them the skills to do their conservation job better. Mm -hmm. one, of the, uh, one of the big challenges about conservation, wildlife conservation in any country, but particularly Rwanda, is that there's a population density that's right up against the park. Mm. So you have to reach the people in those communities. Mm. And one of the ways to do that would be to have filmmakers from that community make films that they can take back to the community and say, hey, these are our goals, can you help us out? Yeah. So how did this program start? How did it, how did, what was the inception to the materialization of it? So I was in uh, Uganda for a job 15 years ago. Wow, that, amazing. isn't it amazing how you'll do a gig yeah. and you'll think like, I'm never gonna hear from these guys again. And then like a decade plus later, <laughs> Well, what happened in Uganda was I was working for an organization called EnviroVet. Yeah. And a guy at the um, University of Illinois had decided, like, wow, there's no veterinary medicine that is used for wildlife. Mm -hmm. Veterinary medicine was always, you know, for pets or domestic animals, yeah. animals that had a wallet attached to them. <laughs> and, uh, right. Wildlife populations are diminishing so much now that like before we could rely on a herd of wildebeest to, to kind of take care of themselves, but it's not that way anymore. So like condors are a really good example. Every condor that's being reintroduced, they're like million dollar birds. They have to put in so much care to the remaining few because there's so few left it's imperative yeah. that they don't die from some wacky disease right. and it's the same with the mountain gorillas those gorillas are the golden geese of east africa fifteen hundred dollars per hour to go up and look at mountain gorillas whoa yeah that that's a lot of money. So did you get to do it for free because you were the... Right, I was on a job and so, yeah. Yeah. That, and uh, yeah. But they're taking groups of 10 tourists up into the mountain. Wow. For one hour uh, to watch the gorillas for 1,500 bucks per person. So that's like, like ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 for every group that goes up. And they share that with the communities. So how's that different from like seeing a gorilla at a zoo for like a far cheaper price? Is it because well, number one, you can't see mountain gorillas in the zoo. Mm. There are no mountain gorillas in zoos. Yeah, and yeah. when they started this in the '90s, I think the mountain gorilla population was down to like four or five hundred individuals. Yeah, and uh, now it's up. To, it's over a thousand. So it, it's really worked out. But. To get to your question about uh, how this whole thing began was when I was over there and we were doing this filming for the, for the thing, one of the veterinarians, one of the Ugandan veterinarians came up to me and he was telling me like, you got to show us how to make movies because this is what happened to me. He said, you know, we have to watch these gorillas 18 hours a day. Like, we have to make sure that no human-introduced disease is coming into their, their environment. Mm -hmm. Because if it does, like if measles jumped into the gorilla population, that would be the end of mountain gorillas. Mm -hmm. So they have to watch them. They watch them, but from a distance, and they never intervene with natural processes. Right. You know, if one gorilla beats the shit out of another, they don't come in and try to help them. Yeah. It's part of evolution. But right. if 
they start coughing, they start looking like they're, they got a human induced disease, then they gotta step in. So these guys are watching them all the time, seeing, you know, they're coughing or whatever. And one day, this guy's telling me, uh, he said, I was watching the gorillas when a mountain gorilla, a silverback, keeled over and died. Yeah, he said it was a natural thing. I mean, the, the gorilla was old and he had a heart attack or whatever, and he died. He said that wasn't the remarkable part. The remarkable part was that within like 10, 20 minutes, juveniles and females came in and he said it was an unmistakable morning rite mm. over this fallen gorilla, this dead gorilla. It was like a gorilla wake. And he, he was like amazed and he watched it as it was happening. As soon as it was over, he went back, he looked through the literature, nothing about Nothing about it. This Gorilla is something he just, he just yeah. this is something he discovered on the job. But he said, if I had a camera, and if I had the, the skills of using that camera, yeah. this would have been international news. Because yeah. it's not in any of the literature. So that stuck with me. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. You know? And those guys encouraged me too. They said, you know, anything we can do to help you. And I was lucky that I had this guy, Greg Bakunzi, mm -hmm. in Muzanzi, Rwanda. Yeah. He was like, hey man, let's do it. Yeah. I'll, I'll help. And he set me up at his compound. It's called Red Rocks Initiative. It's like a tourist area where um, They've got cabins and uh, food and so forth, and it's right there next to the Volcanoes National Park. Wow. How did you actually structure the class? How did you kind of figure out how it was going to work? Yeah, that was tough, because I'm not a teacher. But the guys in the class, they're, they're rangers, trackers, and guides. These are conservationists. Their, yeah. their job, their focus is you know, showing tourists the gorillas, showing tourists the birds, showing tourists the wildlife, uh, filmmaking. Yeah. completely new so we, I mean basic things like just how to carry a tripod right right I, I gotta say when you carry a tripod you scare me when you do it because like you have the camera attached to it and you just throw it over your shoulder I'm like what if that like one latch that little latch that holds the camera there what if that goes loose yeah, yeah. well that's also on my mind and because it's on my mind, yeah. you pay attention. Yeah, yeah. So having, doing things like that, you, God forbid the mistake ever happens, you'll never do it twice. <laughs> yeah. Now that's something you gotta probably tell the kids of. It's like, hey, be conscious of this. They're not kids. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. They're, How uh, old are the, they? The age was, uh, the, the youngest was 19. So uh, I, I, you, you could say the kid okay. maybe. But, most of them were in their upper 20s, and I think the oldest was 34. Oh, wow. And yeah. some of them, I mean, they had professional careers. One of them was a veterinarian. Oh, you know, so. that's so sweet. I, I love animals. So, And, of course, going there, you, you get wildlife Well, you know, time. that's what's so cool about doing the class is that, you know, you think like wildlife filmmaking, you, you, your mind kind of concentrates or focuses on the filmmaking part. Yeah. But it's really... Most for most people in the class, it's the wildlife. Yeah, they're yeah. into the wildlife. They know that it's, you know, threatened, yeah. and they're trying their best. They're trying all the different tools that they have to try to protect it. Yeah, and filmmaking just is another tool in their toolbox to do it. Of course, because you can document it and show it to the world, and that's the coolest thing about it. Yeah. Especially if they had that wake procession for the gorilla that passed That's away. A good imagine, example. imagine getting that on camera. But no. here's the other thing is that um, in countries like Rwanda, East Africa, incredible biodiversity. Mountain gorillas, lions, elephants, hippos, giraffes. I mean, they got it all. Got the whole list. But who comes to do this stuff? The BBC, Discovery, yeah. Nat Geo, Japanese TV. New Zealand uh, uh, public TV. They're all coming in, parachuting in, spending a couple weeks there, filming wildlife, and then leaving. 
We want to give these skills to Rwandans, especially the Rwandans that are closest to the wildlife, rangers, trackers, and guides, to give them a voice in the conservation issues that are being discussed globally. And this is a way to do it. Yeah, it absolutely is, you know, because there's always stuff to film. That's one thing I've learned as I've grown up. There's always things to film, you know, and getting something like this is just amazing to present to right. the public. So so there's two things. One is, yeah. like you're, you're indicating, like, always things to film yeah. like there's some frog out there that's never been seen yeah exactly and, exactly and, and some guy in rwanda that's close to a national park where that he has a much better chance of actually finding that frog yeah or finding that butterfly or finding that bird but the other side of it is is that they have a different perspective yeah to wildlife than we do to the West does. They all have a different idea of where wildlife fits in with their with mm -hmm. the human landscape. And it's important that we understand the West understands what the East African idea or the Rwandan idea is of wildlife. Yeah. Because that's how we're going to be able to be most effective with protecting wildlife in the future. Right, right. We need everybody at the table. So what was what were the classes like? Uh, how was it stepping into the teacher arena? <laughs> a little awkward. Uh, you know, for a lot of them, you know, English isn't their first language. Mm, mm -hmm, There's mm -hmm. more French speakers, and certainly everybody speaks Kinyarwanda, yeah. which is the, the local language. Right, which you, you don't speak, right? Uh, the only thing I know is Tujende. 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 Does that mean come here? No, it means let's go. Let's go. Okay, Tujende. <laughs> so, so that, that's a good. That's. I mean, you. Moraposa. You, you should. You should know Tujende, especially on the shoot when someone's like, "Can you film that?" Uh, Tujende. Tujende. Come on. <laughs> Tujende. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful language. A very, yeah. uh, very lyrical, and uh, the when the class showed up. I didn't know who was going to show up. I didn't, right. you know, we asked them because we got more applicants than we had spots for. So oh, we had okay. to have some sort of filter. Yeah. And that filter was, you had to write a little essay about why you wanted to take this class. Uh, how it was going yeah. to help you. See who's serious about it. Who, not, how's yeah. it going to help you with your career? Yeah. So uh, we had eight students. Yeah. And, uh, that was a perfect amount because I brought over, I think I brought over five cameras, three tripods, package of stuff. Yeah. And man, they just devoured it. They were like all over. How'd you get it on the plane? I, I had a nice, uh, about four foot um, tube. Okay. And uh, just packed it all in real careful and a yeah. couple of zooms that Zoom you yeah. donated. And you weren't worried that once it went through the baggage, they'd toss it like a football and destroy everything? <laughs> you control what you can You can control. only control what you can <laughs> control and just kind of roll the dice and hope for the best. Go with it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, this was remarkable. Is that um, They were so motivated to learn. That made such a difference. They showed up every day. Each class was minimum four hours, yeah. but they then they'd linger for like two, three, four hours more. Oh, that's wonderful. So yeah. they, they'd want to just film stuff and just keep going, right? They wanted to learn. Yeah. So we'd go over the menus of the cameras. And yeah. They're young, so <laughs> they were far more hip to electronic menus than, than I'll ever be. I'm, I'm starting to get there myself, and I'm in my mid-30s, you know. It was a good mix, women and men. Yeah. And uh, Good, good. Everybody was real respectful to each other. I and mean, this was way cool. Yeah. So I got this four hours I got to fill up, you know, and we're doing, you know, showing them how to carry a tripod, how to turn on the Zoom unit, you know, yeah, how yeah, to yeah. set up a microphone for an interview. But what would happen is, is that I'd go over some complex... 
electronic technological thing and you know show them and then somebody one of them that got it better than the others would would turn and start talking in Kinyarwanda to the others and you know I'm no idea what he's saying. Yeah. He could be saying, hey, this, this fathead doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't know what he's going to do. But they all would like listen and then they'd all get it. Yeah. And so it was way cool that here I am on one level speaking in English, telling them how to do it. And then it's getting re emphasized in Kenya, Rwanda by one of the students to the other students. Yeah, that is, that is beautiful. So, so he was able to just interpret what you were saying yeah. to people who, you know, maybe weren't as, weren't as hip to it. But it's great that you're teaching adults this. But did, did they make, like, their own movies individually at one point? Or did they yeah. just kind so, of just make uh, one No, we decided that, um, we decided that uh, we'd break up into teams. Yeah. And one, and like I said, a veterinarian was in, was, was in the class. And he had this great idea. Let's bring up One Health. Yeah. You know, that, that it's a... What's One Health? It's a new concept in the last 20 years that says, hey, you know, when we're talking about human health, a lot of times it's in this silo by itself, you know. We never consider animal health and ecosystem health. Yeah. We always think, well, those are, you know, those are for animals and ecosystem. That's not human health. Nah, they're all related. And COVID is a real good example. Mm. Some people think it came from this mammal called a pangolin yeah. in the uh, in the, the wet markets in um, Wuhan, mm. or maybe it came from bats or whatever. Like AIDS, AIDS comes from chimpanzees. Yeah. Flu comes from poultry. Yep. Tuberculosis comes from horses or pigs. Yeah, all this stuff. We we forget how interrelated it is with wildlife. Yeah. We forget that, that whoa, I talk loud in that mic. Yeah, we, we forget how there are diseases and other creatures that could affect us because in our everyday life, you know, we just, we, we don't think about germs and all that. No. Maybe we do now. You know, right? Maybe after COVID, we do because we have people who wear masks inside all the time when you know they don't have to. When it's not life threatening anymore because we have the tools to protect ourselves. But learning how it, where it stems from and where it comes from, and especially if you're in Rwanda, there there's a lot of opportunity to sell footage. You know, if you like film something like the wake you were mentioning or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You know. But, but here, this is the point I was trying to make is what was so cool about this class, about yeah. the students who showed up. When I, when I brought up, hey, we got to do three movies here. The veterinarian says, hey, let's do one hell. Yeah. And like, that's perfect because here I'm showing these rangers, trackers, and guides how to make films. And the first film that they come up with is this very relevant film to human health and wildlife. Mm. I mean, it's not like going out and saying, hey, let's just do, uh, let's get some shots of frogs and talk about it. No, they're actually applying it yeah. to this global issue of human health. Mm -hmm. I was. I was dumbfounded. I thought, man, that's a great idea. And so that was one of the movies that we, um, that was their first movie that they produced. Well, it's, it's teamwork, you know, and when you're filmmaking, you, it's not just you who like rely on all the ideas. It's everyone's ideas, you know, good and bad. Oh and yeah. You just filter out the bad ones with the good ones. Cause there's definitely, you know, there's definitely students who will say an idea and you're like, eh, I don't know if that'll work. But then that same student will have an idea and you're like, oh, that's, that's brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. 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 And that, that was probably the, one of the bigger challenges of, for me was yeah. when do I step back? You know? Yeah. Like I'm all, I'm the guy that's going to teach you how to do this, you know? And yeah. now nah, you, you show them and then let them, let them partially be the teacher. That's what I've learned sometimes. Sometimes it's like the students can teach me things. Cause it's not just, Oh yeah. Yeah. It's not just I'm here and you're here. 
you know, I'm above you. It's it's like, how can we work together right. to create something really cool that we're proud of? And I was just so fortunate to have yeah. eight people that were not only like sharp, but they were totally motivated. Yeah. They want to do this. That they To them, it was fun. Yeah. And when they have fun and you have fun, everyone has fun with it. One of the happiest moments. Yeah. I'm going to say it's one of the happiest moments of my life. Wow, okay. We Not went out Oscars? to do <laughs> we went out to do a shoot at this swamp. It was called Twin Lakes. Yeah. And we got there like at dawn yeah. and we were there for the entire day filming, you know, villages and filming, you know, animals and so forth. Mm -hmm. But as we were coming back in the bus, I was sitting in the front seat next to the driver. They were talking in their language with each other they were so animated they were so happy that uh, they actually were out there doing a shoot wow on wildlife they were i had i had no idea what they were saying but you could tell from the tone of their voice that they were just so into it yeah they were just happy <laughs> there, it's, it, to them it was a real activity and a real passion that they could pursue they saw an opportunity that maybe this thing might catch hold and they might be able to make movies yeah and be able to give an expression to their life experience with wildlife yeah yeah that's beautiful and are you so what are you doing now are you are you continuing the program yeah or are you trying to yeah because I know there's a GoFundMe out there that's making some dough. That's right. Rwanda yeah. Wildlife Filmmaking is the GoFundMe um, title. Yeah. And uh, what we're trying to do is raise $5,000 so that I can buy a shotgun mic, a boom pole, another zoom unit. Yeah. A couple of Canon uh, Rebel cameras. Yeah. Or uh, Black Magics. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we're trying to keep it the gear cheap. Yeah. Because if something, God forbid, should happen, like if we got, well, first of all, we're not going to have that much money. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a GoFundMe. You right. Know, it's like we we got to spread this money really carefully. Yeah. We got to get tripods, and uh, but the places that we have to sp like kind of take the hurt is a good long lens yeah that's that's the big expensive one yeah you know and but. a and a proper tripod that can keep it steady and so forth yeah so that's yeah that's the goal you know we got two weeks left mm, okay and we got a five thousand dollar goal so please everybody if you're looking for a sign this is it help these guys out because they're motivated they're for conservation, and this is this is part of the solution. Yeah, we're going to give voice to Rwandans. Yeah, and if you don't give money, you're going to hell. Ah. No, I'm just <laughs> no. Uh, but no, thank you for letting me know about this program. It sounds amazing. What, what, how do you? What do you think you're going to do if you get money and push it, push it forward? Like, are you going to do? I'm more? going to go in uh, May, June. That's ah. the plan. I would go back. And we'll do it again. I'll be there for a month. New new students or uh, some new students, yeah. but also working with the ones that I had. Okay. Yeah. So it's continuing, and yeah. not only that, but we also uh, I got an email from a biological station in Ecuador, Tiputini, uh -huh. and they're interested wow. in having, bringing the uh, course to them. That would be amazing. So you could bring it all over the place. You know my my. My ultimate goal, what I would like to see, is that there be places around the globe yeah. where people that in developing nations that don't have access to this kind of thing can have, I can give them the skill and some of the tools. Yeah. So that they can do their conservation mm. videos. Yeah. Because it's going to be different than what a Westerner is going to do. Right, right. Because now you have their perspective solely. Exactly. Because like, you're sort of an outsider learning about all this. Right. Where they've 
grown up with it, you know. A lot of times these villages are right up against the national parks. Right. If you don't have their cooperation, it's not going to work. Ooh, yeah. Mountain gorillas were being poached yeah. in the 90s. They were killing them, cutting off their hands and making ashtrays. Oh. You know, yeah, real stupid. To make ashtrays? Yeah. How yeah. do you make an ashtray out of you a put gorilla? A, you put a little piece of glass in there and the mummified palm. Just horrible shit. Jesus Christ. And... Uh, that was because the the farmers yeah. looked at gorillas kind of like the way people in uh, Tennessee might look at a black bear, like they're a nuisance. Mm. And uh, but once those communities saw that tourists wanted to come and pay good money to see them, and that money was coming in to build a clinic, yeah. build a school in the adjacent community, then the community starts saying, "Hey." If they see a poacher, they see somebody they don't know going up into the mountains, they're asking them questions. Like, right. Yeah, you know, like, hey, don't don't mess with our gorillas. Right, right. Well that that's amazing and I I think you're I, I would love to be a part of this program one day. If I ever could go to Rwanda and teach Oh, that'd be amazing. Oh, maybe we got a spot for you. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. You got you know, how would you guys like to see you'll probably agree episodes? Yeah. Where Trekking I, up the uh, side of a volcano. Well, yeah, that and I could, I get screener links to like you know a lot of indie movies, so I could just do indie movies during that time. But mm. yeah, but you know, Rwanda does have a uh, uh, a growing filmmaking community. Mm, that's and, amazing. And uh, Ellen DeGeneres ha has built a huge like science station in the Volcanoes National Park. Wow. Ellen and DeGeneres? And I think DiCaprio is involved, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, does that have anything to do with global warming? Uh, well, they're seeing the effects of it, yeah. Yeah, because that, would, why, that would be why DiCaprio would do that, because he's, like, really into global warming. Although he I think DiCaprio is just into the environment in general. Ah, uh. Yeah. I see, I see. But DeGeneres, I think she's also involved with the environment, but she just fell in love with the mountain gorillas. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, who wouldn't, you know? <laughs> I went to see them. I've, I've seen them a few times. Yeah. And um, the last time I saw them, it is. It's a wonderful experience. David, thank you so much for telling me thanks, about this Mike. program. And thanks to Galway Bay. Yeah, thank, thank you, Galway Bay, for sticking with Galway us even Bay after. Galway Bay on Diversity Avenue in Northside Chicago. West, yeah, it's 500 West Diversity Avenue. you got to remember, some Rwandans are going to watch this. What yeah. do you want to tell them about Chicago and about what you do? Well, th this bar is great because not only do they let me do this, but it has like a, it doesn't feel like a corporate kind of bar. It's a very small town kind of feel. So you kind of get people who are really like themselves and you you can make a lot of friends here, too, as I have. And that's why I like doing my show in a bar, because what brings people together more than movies and bars? And why not put the two together? Mm -hmm. You know, because how many times have you been in a bar and you're like, I saw that movie. Oh, yeah. And then you guys get to talk about that. We got to do a uh, you'll probably agree in Kigali Ooh. or Muzanzi. Okay, maybe one day we could do With that. With the students. That, that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. So many possibilities. So many possibilities. Maybe they, maybe that's where my summer will be. I don't know. But, guys, if you want to give to the Rwanda Wildlife Filmmaking Program, please check out the link that will uh, be in the description of this video or podcast, depending on how you're listening or watching it. And please contribute however you can. David, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for being uh, with me and my friend for so many years. And, guys, if you want to check out the Rwanda Wildlife Filmmaking Program, please check out the links that you'll see in the description below. So, like, if you're watching a video and you're like, oh, where's the description? There's always, like, that see more option you can click on. I'm just saying it for, like, a dinosaur myself who sometimes doesn't know technology. This is your chance. If you want to make a difference... Contribute to the program. This is going to move the needle on conservation. Yeah, absolutely. David, thank you so much for Thanks, coming Mike. on. You can check out David McGowan at ravenswoodmedia.com. 
And you can check out my stuff at you'll probably agree.com. Although it's YPA reviews.com and the YPA stands for you'll probably agree. All right, guys, have a great one.